Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us for our Good Friday prayer service. The gospel message is explained in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, and on the third day He was raised from the dead according to the Scriptures. Today we pause to reflect and to remember that day so long ago when Jesus died in our place so that we might be forgiven and saved from our sins. Today's scripture readings are a harmony of the four Gospels, and I encourage you to take some time later on this afternoon or this evening, sometime over the weekend, to read the crucifixion narrative in full. You can find it in Matthew 27. Mark chapter 15, Luke 23, and John chapter 19. The focus of our scripture readings today, the focus of our meditation, will be on the seven last statements that Christ made on the cross. Let's pray. O Lord, bring us once again to the foot of the cross that we might see and know our Savior with fresh eyes and tender hearts. Let us be moved to true worship, humble repentance, assured peace, and resolute devotion as we bow at the cross in Christ's name. Amen. Our first reading, the cries of forgiveness. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. And he, bearing his cross, went out. There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he tasted it, he would not drink. There they crucified him. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, it was about nine in the morning, and the people stood looking on. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God? seeing you are under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our Lord Jesus was sinfully, wickedly, hatefully, wrongfully sentenced to death, and He was nailed to the cross. But rather than lashing out in justified rage or anger, Jesus prayed and offered forgiveness and mercy. He extended mercy to His executioners because they were spiritually blind to what they were doing. This first word of Christ is a word of mercy, and it gives us hope that all of us who are sinners may find grace and mercy in Christ. And though it was our sins that nailed Him to the cross, He gladly suffered so that we might be pardoned, justified, and adopted into God's family as beloved children. The Lord Jesus' words of pardon expressed to the repentant thief reminds us that forgiveness is not something that we earn by our good deeds, not by our works, as important as those things are. We do not achieve salvation. We simply receive it by grace when we humbly confess that we deserve condemnation and we meekly ask to be remembered by our Lord. When we do, He assures us of the forgiveness of all of our sins and guarantees us a place with Him in paradise. Today, our Lord Jesus calls sinners to receive forgiveness, grace, and mercy from Him by receiving it 
by having simple faith and trust in Him. Again, we pray. Father, it is our fault that Jesus died. Like the repentant thief, we confess we deserve judgment and condemnation for our sin. And Jesus did not deserve anything but the love, adoration, and worship of the world. Yet in His great love for us, Christ died that we might be forgiven. And so we are humbled and we are grateful that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Amen. Our second scripture is the cry of compassion. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The Lord Jesus is eternal God. When he came into the world, he added to his deity humanity so that he might be the savior of the world. To be a human being, he had to have a mother. And as Mary's firstborn child, it was Jesus' responsibility to see that his mother was cared for. And although Jesus was hanging on the cross, dying for the sins of the world, he did not forget his duty to care for his mother, and so he entrusted her care to his beloved apostle, John. This act of compassion reminds us that though we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and though that we seek first the kingdom of God and Though we must follow Christ no matter the cost, we still have a responsibility to love our neighbors, particularly those neighbors that we call family. This also reminds us that Jesus cares not only for our souls, not only for our eternal salvation, but He cares for our day-to-day needs as well. We can trust Him with our whole being, body, soul, and spirit. Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving and caring about us, body, soul, and spirit. We trust you to meet our needs. Apart from you, we are helpless and hopeless. As you have loved us, may we love others. Amen. My song is love. 
next reading are the cries of suffering. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, the sun was darkened, and there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, Look, this man is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed of hyssop and put it to his mouth and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him and take him down. Jesus suffered great physical agony. We know this when he cried out, I thirst. Jesus suffered dehydration, massive blood loss, exhaustion, physical shock and trauma. He suffered mental and emotional pain from mockery, humiliation, and rejection. Jesus knows our pain and our sorrow because He endured tremendous pain and suffering on the cross. But greater than the physical and emotional suffering was the spiritual suffering Jesus cried out in Aramaic, his native language, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. Aramaic was the language that he grew up speaking in Galilee. And so there were some who had gathered there who misunderstood him, thinking that he was praying to Elijah, that he was just mumbling. But Jesus wasn't praying to Elijah. He was praying to his father. And he was praying the words of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There is much that we do not understand of the spiritual suffering endured by Christ on the cross. We cannot fully comprehend what these words meant to Jesus as He cried them, and we never will. But we do know something of feeling alone, abandoned, and isolated in our times of sorrow and grief. Whatever was happening to Jesus, He felt utterly alone and deeply anguished. We must remember, though, that Jesus' cry, Why have you forsaken me? was not made in anger or rage or hopelessness. Jesus was praying in faith. 
Perhaps because he was in such great physical agony, he could not physically say all of the words of Psalm 22. But if you read on in that psalm, you find that it is a psalm of hope in God during times of great travail. Jesus shows us that we can hold fast to the Father even in our darkest moments. We can do this because it is at this moment that Jesus is paying for all of our sins in full and paving the way to the Father. For us, there is no darker moment in life than to realize the full weight and guilt of our sin because it is our sin that separates us from God. But because of this moment in Christ's life, as He hung on the cross, because of His blood, He has reconciled us to the Father. Because Jesus suffered, we are accepted. Join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we suffer, but You have suffered more. Because of Your suffering, give us faith and hope, knowing that You have not forsaken us or abandoned us. When we feel the despair of our sin, may we sense the presence of Your love. Amen. Our final reading are the cries of fulfillment. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, bowing his head, he breathed his last and yielded up his spirit. It is finished means that salvation's work 
is done. With Christ as our Savior, our sin debt is paid in full, and the work of atonement is completed. The wrath of God against our sin is completely satisfied. Because of Christ, we Christians stand forgiven before our Father, and there is nothing more that can be or needs to be done. We simply receive the gift of life and forgiveness through Christ. And because of Christ, we commit our spirits to God. Jesus died 2,000 years ago to be our example in life. To be our victor over sin, death, and hell. To be our substitute and to suffer our deserved punishment. And to be our Redeemer and Savior. Lord Jesus, Thank you for the cross. for joining us today. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient to death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. Amen.